everybody, welcome to Klaus to the Heart Live on ON TV. Uh, we certainly appreciate you taking time out of your night to give this show a watch. Uh, we're kind of doing something different, and I am going to do a little bit of a backstory to explain why I'm doing something a little bit different. I, uh, I like most of us are, are our own worst critics, right? So anytime I do anything, eventually either the day after or weeks after, I will go back and look and see what I did, what I liked, what I didn't like. Now, I have had a tremendous opportunity here on ONTV, and I've had some amazing guests who have told amazing stories. And I'm very proud of the work that we did on those episodes. But being my own worst critic, there was something missing. And not only did I pick up on it, but a a loyal friend and and a so a supporter of our brand also brought it to you know to my attention that you know there was something off they just didn't flow the way my other projects do so i having heard that and having you know maybe you know trying to toy around with with other ideas and stuff i went back to what i know to make it flow a little bit more smoothly for me so what we're going to do, instead of doing the, your typical Q&A type of format, I'm actually going to bring a version of the podcast to this show, to ONTV. So it, essentially, we are going to, to transform this opportunity and this project into a, a television worth like, um, like, like a podcast type of thing. We will tackle a, a topic or two. I will have a guest and we will bounce these ideas off. It's just more of what I think a more, you know, a natural conversation. Uh, joining me here tonight is a friend of mine who we sat here, a, a, you know, a few minutes before we came on the air to, to figure out when the last time we actually, you know, saw each other in, in the same room. And it's been a long time, decade plus. And it just blows my mind, like 12 years, I guess, now at, at this point. Kristen Snyder is with me, and uh, Kristen, number one, it's it's awesome to to see you. I mean, like I just said, it's been a really long time. How yeah. how's things going? Things are going good. Things are going good. A lot has happened in twelve years. Right. <laughs> I mean, you can't really su sum it up in two or three sentences, right? And right. You're, you're talking a decade plus. You know, a lot of life altering things have happened for you, for me, for you know, j just about anybody. Um, so you've been a, a supporter of the brand from from day one. You know, when I launched the whole mo motivational thing on YouTube initially, you were like one of the first ones that, that hit the subscribe button and you followed all, all my stuff on, on social media, um, which really meant a lot because, you know, we first met each other in a professional environment like we worked at at, at the same place and that's right. how we met and you know we have a lot of 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 you know similarities our birthdays are within days of each other and um you know there's other correspondence that that's happened that's been in line with with each other so but like it like it happens from from time to time when when you work alongside somebody you have a mutual respect you have a mutual admiration you have a you know there's it transitions to a personal friendship right and um, that can get tricky at times when when you're friends with people that you work with and especially in our situation because you were the manager of of an apartment property I was in the maintenance, you know, end, end of it. So we didn't always see eye to eye, um, <laughs> but be, I mean, who, who does, right? Because at the end of the day, we're human and, you know, we all think that we're right 100% of the time, but, you know, that's not the case here. Um, so what I wanted to do is you had sent me s several show ideas and I have seen di different things that you've posted on your social media accounts and things of this nature, you know, very motivational, upbeat things. I'm like, ooh, I'm gonna use that for a topic, I'm gonna use that for a topic, I'm gonna use that for a topic. But I've always, you know, I'm like, hey, I saw this thing that you posted, is it okay if I use it on a show? And you're, you know, all the time, I don't think you've ever told me no. So this one here, I felt like really, 
can resonate with a lot of people. Yeah. And as we do this new format here with more of a podcast type of feel, so it's not a, a traditional interview t- you know, type of thing, because as we have found out, I'm not very good at that. Um, but I can talk, right? And we can sit here and have, and have a conversation. So you posted a meme and it really triggered. Like I was like, oh, wow, that... This, especially in this day and age when there is so much animosity in the world around us, you see it everywhere you go now. You know, you can't even take your kid to school right now without hearing about it, seeing it in some way, shape, or form, right? Your greatest test will be how you handle people who mishandled you. Now, you know, we, if we, when you go back and you look over the course of your life, um, you look back to good and bad you know there's a lot of things that we experience that we may not remember you know for because it happened when we were younger or it just did not resonate the way that it probably should have or what whatever but there are snapshots right because if you are in some sort of a relationship with somebody like like a friendship or even you know a little bit more deeper than that you know, if it's a spouse or fiance, a significant other, that that type of thing. You know, if they're if you are mistreated or mishandled by somebody that you are emotionally invested in, you know, on some regard, it doesn't ne- necessarily have to be all in. You know, it could be like like I said, your your typical friendship or right. or or whatever. Um, I feel like because. This has, you know, this was something that you had sent in. This means something to you, right? Absolutely. So, (laughs) I mean, do you have a specific instance that made this thing stand out? Well, I think it's like you said, uh, throughout life, you experience, you have that relationship with other people, um, work, family, uh, romantic relationships. And I think a lot of the times people think they mess up where they have a a bad situation and it has to be the end of it you know what i mean and family included um, because i've experienced that as well uh i think it speaks volumes when you can take yourself outside of the situation and look at what causes the action rather than the action itself because a lot of times uh especially from what I've experienced, hurt people hurt people. Right. So when you stand back and look at it that way and try to put yourself in that person's shoes, you really look at it different. That's a very good point to all of this because a, a lot of times when we are affected, when we are hurt, when we are you know damaged in some way, shape, or form, Primarily with words, right? I mean, yeah. but that it, it's not regulated to just words. Because right. a lot of times that animosity gets more intense and more intense and more intense, and it starts to become a physical thing. Right. Um, there are different layers of the word mishandled. You know how you feel that you've been mishandled because. I believe the majority of us, and of course this is not across the board, as, as we all know, if you spend any kind of time on social media, you know that, um, there are people that are legit victims in some way, shape, or form. And when, when you are affected on that level, and it, you know, the deeper it is, the worse it is. And, you know, we have a tendency, a lot of us, to go in into defense mode. Right. When we feel hurt or we feel attacked, we feel like, you know, every single person now is out to get you, right? Yeah. I mean, I who hasn't had that kind of, 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 of situation running through their head? So a lot of times we don't, we because we're so wrapped up in the moment, a, a lot of us, and I just talked about this on one note of the podcast this week, a lot of us act strictly on on impulse. I mean, whatever's happening, you get the immediate re- reaction. Yeah. And a lot of times, it's I guess it 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 all depends on how much control you can have over your own emotions. Because like like right. you were saying, 
when you are hurt, you are going to do everything you can to make that person feel a degree of the pain or, or whatever that they have bestowed upon you, right? Right. Um, so, I mean, I totally get that, but we have a tendency to, like I said, we, we have a tendency to, to, to feel like everybody's out to, out to get us. So we, we start treating other people like garbage and right. m making them feel bad. Um, I think that plays into when you're having a discussion with someone too, and like you said, if it is verbal, it's words most of the time primarily it goes back to listening to respond. A lot of us do that. I catch myself doing it all the time. I am like can't wait for someone to finish so I can respond to what they're saying and it's slowing down and really hearing what the other person's saying. I have maintained that most arguments or conflicts or anything of the like can be resolved with communication. But it can't be two people just talking. It's got to be one person talking, the other one listening. Yeah. Actually listening to what they're saying. I can hear you talking, but I need you to. I need you need to listen to what's actually being said. But you also have to take into consideration, and this is where a lot of people have have issues and why they go into into defense mode and they act on impulse is they don't give themselves time to properly digest what's being said. Yeah, and every and everybody's uh, time frame for that is different. Yes, <laughs> yeah, and that's a huge problem. If you, if you have a, a two-person argument and you have two different personalities, you have one that needs the answers and the resolution right this second. Yep. You have the other one that is more calculated about stuff. Let me think about this. Yeah. Let me process and digest what you have laid out here. Right. Because there has to be some sort of happy medium. Now, the person that acts on impulse is not going to understand this, and the one that's, that, that, that needs the time is not going to understand this. Now, what I would, what I would say is don't take a week to, to figure out how it is you feel about something. I mean, it's got to be done, you know, I would say within – an hour, right? Because you have enough time if you're able to take yourself out of the immediate environment that is bringing out all these emotions. You can digest it. Yes. Yeah. You know, take the time to figure out number one what what was said, how you feel about it, because everybody is is entitled to feel how they feel about it. Right. It may it may be a word that was taken out of context. It may be something that just came out wrong, and that's you know I'm very much a person that is more calculated. Like, I'm hearing what you're saying. Right. I am listening to every word that you're telling me, but I need time to process this. Right. And I will come back with my with my rebuttal. Is it gonna happen with, within the next 90 seconds? Probably not, because <laughs> yeah. my brain just don't work like that. Right. Um, so I, I got to think because I feel like I'm one of I'm I'm one of those people that if I go off of impulse, you'll be angry. <laughs> who hasn't seen it, right? Yeah. I mean, I've as I've gotten older, you know, I've had a little bit more 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 control over it. But when I was younger, I mean, it happened at work a, a you know a few <laughs> times. I you know so, something. It takes me a minute to to get to that point, but once I got to that point. It, the the wrestler part took over I in this promo would come, would you know just pop in my head and I was just so mad and I didn't know how else yeah to verbalize it I start cutting promos on people and I start slamming things and I threw things around thankfully as I've gotten older and I found other avenues to deal with 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 that type of thing I don't do that nearly as much now right but if I do, it's because something really terrible has happened and I have now reached beyond the point of no return. Yeah. Um, and I think that that can be said with just about anybody because right. we never grow up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There is never a time in our lives that we don't learn something, that we can't be taught something to improve our everyday situation. Because I'm sure you know. Oh, absolutely. You know, the things that you have been through, the things that you have seen, the things that you have done, 
like you were married at, at an early age and you know you have a daughter and you know there's a whole dynamic with that there's a whole chapter of your life a huge chunk of your life now your experience with with your daughter and my experience with mine are not on the same level here okay. so we we have different ways of of looking at things how we respond to things but at the end of the day regardless of what it is i feel like the, the one of the biggest issues are with society as a whole really is that we have lost our focus on the basic fu fundamentals of life and one of those fu fundamentals and i should probably write these down and compile them into a book or a meme or something like that but one of them is and it's cliche but it still holds true to this day if we allow it to be applied treat others as you would as you would want to be treated you want the respect you want the you know you want people to like you respect you listen to you hear you feel you that type of thing that's got to be a two-way street yeah you I know? couldn't agree more and sometimes we have to take ourselves out of that equation to get a clear mind instead of just acting on impulse instead of okay my sole purpose in this argument now is to make you feel as bad as I feel, if not worse. Well, what's the end? What's the end game here? Because right. it's just going to be a vicious, you know, circle. So, as you have approached the different challenges, and we don't have to go into detail. We don't have to go in, you know, into the woods, as you know, as they say. That's totally up to you. But as you have dealt with different things, like life-altering things, at different parts of your life. Do you find at this point that you handle your side of, of the situation and your ill feelings towards a, a, a particular argument or an environment or a situation better now because you have all this more experience than you did back then? Absolutely. I would say I have a friend who says this all the time and it's very true and I remind myself of it at, while I'm at work often is that everybody looks at life through a different lens. Mm -hmm. uh, it's based on their experience in life and, and something that might trigger you might not trigger me and I might not understand. Right. So I think talking to people, meeting people where they are, um, especially in a, any type of leader position, right. is super important. You, you can't address this person the same way you address this person. So. I think along my way, that is what I've learned. I've learned it the hard way a lot of the time. Uh, I wouldn't take any of it back because it's part of who I am, right. you know? Uh, but yeah, I would definitely handle things differently than 20 year old me. <laughs> if you knew then what you know now, right? right. I, I mean, I, I totally understand that on a few different levels here, you know, because you are, you are in an industry that you deal with all kinds of people, not just the people you work with, right. but you know you have, it's more like, um, for the lack of a better term, because I don't want to go too far into the woods, but um, customer oriented. Right. And you're right, um, in an, an industry there. But so you're dealing with a variety of people every single day. Right. You know, so I totally get that for me. You know, I was in that industry too. So, you know, going to do different things on any on any given day, you you know, I was met with different people every single day. And you're right, right. you can't treat them all as one because we are all individualized, man. There, I mean, there is not two people in this world that are exactly the same. Not even yeah. twins. They may look the same, but on the inside, there's something else ticking, right? Um, so, but as a promoter. As somebody that has run a professional wrestling company for going on 28 years now, I have dealt with so many people that come from so many walks of life, and you have to take that into into consideration. Now, when when they come in, and I don't know them yet, I don't know anything about them, and I'm sure this is how it is in, in your line of work as well, all you know is maybe a name. Right. You don't know where these people have been. You don't know what makes them tick. You don't know what sets them off. Right. You know, that's where you kind of take the time to, 
you know, learn what they're all about. Listen to them. Figure out who they are so you know how to correspond with them accordingly. Um, because if you, like you said, if you do treat everybody the same way, it's not going to resonate well. It's received different by yeah, each one of them. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, anybody that's in any kind of customer based industry, restaurants, or, you know, anytime you have to deal with the general public in any setting, yeah, you really have to go into it with n number one you know, a lot of patience, yeah. right? Number two, you have to have a, a degree of, of sympathy and, and empathy because you don't know what these people are going through. Right. Um, so when we, when we are encountered with people that are treating us or talking to us like garbage that we may not have any idea why we're being treated this way in a professional environment, and I guess in some regards in, in a personal one too, you got to take the time to to kind of step back and be like, okay, what's happening here? Right. Especially if, if it's somebody that you know. Right. And if they're treating you like garbage all of a sudden, you're like, you know, some people are going to be like, oh, you know what? Screw you. I don't need you. Right. You know what I mean? But then you risk throwing your friendship away of X amount of years over maybe in the grand scheme of things is a blip on the radar. Right. Um, or overthinking, because I think that plays a huge, huge role, you know? It plays a huge role. You might not know the scenario that this person's been thinking about or, you know, what you feed your mind, it eats. So if you're feeding it that negative and negative and negative, you're going to come at any situation or a conflict that way as well. Yeah. you. Uh, it's, it's amazing um, how many aspects of this affects everyday people every single day. They just don't realize it yeah. because they're so wrapped up in, in that moment. Um, I was very, like I said, I, I was very much a person that responded like that. I, I was a person that, re that reacted on impulse. And I treated good people horrible at times. And a lot of times, once I said what I said, I realized because I heard it. Yeah. You know, here, saying it in your head and then saying it verbally, you're like, oh, damn, I really just said that. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Um, that doesn't always meet up. And all depending on what it is and what chord it strikes the other person on yeah. that time, on that day, you know, that can, that can either diffuse the situation because you're like, oh, okay, this is serious. Yeah. Or it severs ties. Like, it's one or the other here. Yeah. Um, so that's why as I've gotten older and I've been encountered with, with different types of conflict and, and, and circumstances, you know, I now make a conscious effort to take that step back. Like if I'm right. being, if I'm being, a, you know, verbally attacked about something and it's from an individual that I know, especially that I know that I'm friends with, I have yeah. some sort of, of, of a relationship with either personal or professional I'm like you know what's your problem you want to talk if you don't want to yeah. talk I'll give you your space right but if if they keep going that route and they keep talking to you like you're part of their problem either let's discuss it or you know go into your own little you know your own little corner there and figure out what the problem is right because I assure you I had nothing, to, you know, I, I'm sorry your dog is lost. I wasn't there that opened the door. Right. You know what I mean? Um, or I'm just using that as one example, but you, you get my point here. Um, and especially in customer service, a lot of the times the last person that picks up the phone is the person that gets that whole day's worth of stuck in traffic, dump coffee on my outfit, <laughs> you know. <laughs> You're the last person who gets it, and and a lot of the times, you know, uh, in my industry, I am the person who's the last person to get it, and I just try to be patient, because I think uh, I've been at points in my life, like you said, when you're young and you think you know everything, and you spout off, and you know, uh, I think you have to take yourself back and say, where's you know, there's probably a whole part of this that I'm not hearing. Right. Because we we weren't there this morning when when they dumped their cereal all over. Yeah. We, you know what I mean. We weren't there when they walked into work and and the first thing that happened is they got yelled at 
by by their boss. That that sets that sets a tone for yep. the whole day. Along those lines, the you know the line because we we mentioned that line between a personal friendship and a professional one. Um, a lot of times, you know, people may not have what we would call an ideal home life, right? There's something happening at home that, you know, a lot of people like to keep their home life at home. I mean, I do. I, I, I don't bring, I don't bring a lot of my personal life to my job with me. Like my friends at, at work, you know, they know more details than somebody that's you know on the other line that I barely know their name. You know what I mean? I don't bring the and, and and subsequently, if there was to be an issue, I try very hard not to let that influence my job. Yeah. You know because I am at this building and they are paying me this wage to do my job. It's not to sit there and huff and puff and be pissed off at the world right. because things aren't aren't really blowing the wind in my sails at home. You, you know what yeah. I'm saying? A lot of people do that. A, a lot of people bring their their home problems to work with them, and they bring in a bad attitude, which in turn sets the entire mood for them and all the people in their surrounding area. Yeah. Whether it be an office, whether it be on the line, whether it be in the back room of a restaurant, whatever the case may be. Nobody wants to work in an environment like that. Like a lot of us are already upset and not not really happy that we have to be at our jobs unless you love your job and if that's the case you're one of the, one of the very lucky ones, right? Um I I mean I I don't mind my job. I don't hate it, you know, and I try to do what I can to make it more enjoyable for my colleagues because let's face it, I'm I'm a midnight guy. And there are other people that work midnights in that building that have no business being on midnight shift because they don't know how to act. You know, they use that as their catalyst to treat people like garbage. Right. Um, the fact of the matter is, if you can't handle it and it affects your life so negatively, mm -hmm. why are you not making a change mm -hmm. for a different shift? You, you know what I'm saying? Or a different job. Right. Um, so, I mean... I already know the answer to this question, but <laughs> are there times that you may have been going through things in your personal life, especially when you were younger, yeah. that you brought to the workplace and oh. subsequently was that was kind of spewed out onto your your colleagues? hundred percent. And how did they react? Yeah, the same way. Right. They mirrored that, you know. Um, and that's something I've learned too, is, is uh, learning how to negotiate with people and, and uh, body language is huge, you right. know? So um, yeah, have I done that? Absolutely. Did I learn the hard way? Absolutely. I feel like if you don't take s something away from every ne negative issue or, or scenario, you've lost an opportunity. Yeah. Because if you keep repeating it, it you know it starts to become a real issue, right. and then you have to sit there and self evaluate: is 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 it me? And what I mean, yes, a part of it is because I I am a common thing in all of these issues. Right. So I've got to believe at so at, at in, in some way or another, I am not handling this stuff right, and I need right. to figure figure it out how. Right. <clears throat> um, so. You and I, like I said earlier in the show, there were a few times that we butted heads. And I, I will say, to our credit, for the, for the most part, we went to great lengths to make sure that any imp Im impending explosion was not going to happen in front of our employees. Yeah. Now, that's not to say that an impromptu one didn't didn't pop off every now and again, and it was just the way that it was, and it made for a good story for everybody else after the fact. <laughs> However, um, without a shadow of a doubt, every single time that we had an argument or we had a disagreement, either b between the two of us in one of our offices or if it was an impromptu one that happened among other people, um, the one thing once cooler heads prevailed and it was usually right. me that had to do the you know that had to do the walk away because 
that's you know that's how I handled things back then not ideal obviously but I've since learned that um, you know I've always come back to number one apologize for my portion of of the, of the discrepancy you did as well and I think the silver lining of it was and I mean there was it didn't happen every day it didn't even happen every week but I mean because of our positions we were right and I feel like a lot of it was we were positioned against one another yeah by the powers that be you know and I'm not going to out at out and anybody but I looking back on it and I didn't feel that way then because I was just so wrapped up in all the emotions but I looked back on it you know a year or two later and it's like that evil woman played us as puppets yeah like you were on one hand and I was on on the other one and every once in a while she <laughs> have have us butt heads you know what I mean I'd, I'd be on a ladder but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean that's Essentially, I feel like that's where a lot of it was. Yeah. But, you know, after a blow up or an argument or something like that, you know, unfortunately, it would be the first person that got into my crosshairs like minutes after the fact, and I haven't had that chance to take a breath. Yeah. They got what I wanted you to have. So, <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Because. Even though in, in, in my maddest time, I realized that there was a line of, you know, you, you could go up to this line, right. but you don't cross the line. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and because I did have personal info on you and you did on me and, and, and the whole thing, we could have very easily crossed that line just, just for the fact of, number one, making our point known. Right and to win an argument right you know what i mean to set your 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 position um i that is the wrong you know that's the wrong way to handle things right. obviously now what i would say is um if you are met in a situation like this if you are if you are somebody that naturally and instinctively acts on impulse in the face of any kind of adversity, I would say this: you've got to give you've got to give yourself a countdown. Yeah. If you feel like your heart is pounding out of your chest, you can feel your face turn red. If you know that you are in a situation to where this conflict is about to escalate to a very bad place, you need to tell yourself. Number one, to, to take two steps back and count back from 10 to 1. Give yourself that opportunity because I promise, it, you know, if, if, you, if, you, if you go on impulse, something will be said that later on in life or later on down the road, you are not, you're not going to be happy with yourself about Right. Um, there's been things that when I, when I look back over the course of my life, I, I look back and think, damn, I should have handled this better i should have said this instead of that right now that i realize what i did why i did it i really have a better handle on how i treat people and especially those people who have wronged me because we can it's very easy to sit, to sit there and hold a grudge for the rest of your life and i guess right. all depending on what the situation is it's justified you know what I mean? Like yeah. if, if it's something that you just cannot look past, some sort of betrayal, some sort of heartbreak, some sort of what whatever, um, you have a conscious choice at that point on how you handle that person going yeah. forward. You don't have to be associated with them if it's that bad. You can sever ties, move on with your life, let that person move on with their life, yeah. and just you you've gone separate ways or you could go on the flip side of this and make it your life's mission to even know what's happened has happened and there has been a dissolving of the relationship on any level yeah you're still making a point to make this person's life a living hell yeah why are you wasting your time like that mm -hmm. a lot of people call that being borderline like a stalker you know what i mean and I know a lot of people, men and women, 
that have gone down that route. You know, they have stalked an ex. They have stalked, you know, what, whoever, um, just in an effort to make their life hell because whatever their dynamic was is no longer a thing. Yeah. Um, in your mind, you can justify it. In your mind, you're right, they're wrong because you feel your feelings, but you don't know what their feelings are because you haven't yeah. taken that time. So, for the lack of a better term, <laughs> have you had a stalker moment in dur during your day? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, they're not fun. <laughs> Uh, it's not a good, it's not a good scenario. No, I, w I wouldn't, uh, <laughs> uh, that's a hard one. Yeah, I, I kind of, I kind of sprung that on you and I apologize. Okay, let's, let's, let's flip it a little bit. Have you, have you stalked somebody during, you know, at, at any point in your life? Because I know that's more of a, of a younger thing, but yeah. by and large, you know, I know that there's older people that do this too because and if you listen to any of my shows this week you're going to hear a, an interesting tale of one of them but that's I the have story not, for another day. Um, but I have I you know I I've, I've in a younger me had friends who definitely were a part of that. So were you like a sidekick to to that? Were you you know I think I was more just like watching it happen. Okay. Like oh this is different. <laughs> <laughs> you know I guess di a different is is a good way to put it but <laughs> at at the end of the day um, you know we all have a conscious choice here as to how we're going to handle every s situation and our biggest test is indeed how we treat people who have mistreated us uh, or mishandled us you know if you were with somebody, and in, in some regards, things did not work out. That's life. It happens. It sucks, especially when there's a lot of time and emotions in, invested in it. But at the same time, you know, how many times have, have you heard me say on, the, on any of my platforms, we get one shot at life. Yeah. So why do we want to waste our time being miserable all the time? Absolutely. You know? And if you can help somebody by showing them the proper way to treat people. Maybe they, they can take that to a different relationship, friendship, wh whatever, later on down the life. Learn from this lesson, and hopefully you can come out a little bit better than you were while you were in it, right? Right. So, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to run a quick timeout here, and when we come back, we are going to talk a little bit about a very special anniversary that's coming up this weekend. So stick around. More of Klaus to the Heart Live on ON TV is right after this timeout. ONTV invites filmmakers of all ages to take part in the annual Wildwood Film Festival. Kickoff is on Thursday, October 7th at 6 p.m. Filmmakers have five days to plan, shoot, and edit a short film that will be critiqued by a panel of judges and shown on the big screen at the Oxford 7th Theater on October 13th. Cost is $50 per team, which goes toward prize money and a portion of which will benefit Lake Orion High School's SOS program. For more information, give Owen TV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. Owen TV encourages you to go back to school and attend our 10-week video production workshop. Classes meet on Monday nights from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and offer instruction on studio production, field production, and nonlinear editing. The cost is $55 per person, and upon completion of the class, you get access to ONTV's facilities and equipment to produce your own program or short film. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. Welcome back to Klaus to the Heart Live on ONTV. I'm Jason Klaus. I'm being joined by Kristen Snyder this week, and we certainly appreciate you coming on yeah. on here tonight. Um, we've talked a pretty deep, you know, topic here and on the first part of of tonight's show. But tonight, 
Uh, because of the date that it is, I felt like it was important that we spend the next few minutes here kind of reflecting and in, in observation of a very special, very important anniversary. It was 20 years ago tomorrow that our world as we knew it changed and not always for the better. We were exposed to the horrific sights of the worst terrorist attack that had happened on our soil since Pearl Harbor. In fact, in my, in my opinion, this, what would happen on September the 11th of 2001 would eclipse the horror that un, unfolded in Pearl Harbor. But that's because this happened while I saw it. I wasn't around when Pearl Harbor happened. So I can imagine for those who were exposed to that in real time as it happened, um, they would feel differently about it. But the difference between then and 9-11 is we watched it unfold live on television. Yeah. So, something like out of a movie, right? right? 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. It's in, in, in some regards, it feels like it happened yesterday. Yeah, I couldn't and, agree more. And in, in, in other ways, it seems like a lifetime ago, but you look back on everything that happened in the hours and the days and, and, and the weeks following those horrific events that unfolded. Hijacked airplanes crashing into the World Trade Center. Uh, I mean, these, this was something that you saw in movies. This did right. not happen in real life. Um, the Pentagon, you know, wh whatever happened at, at, at the Pentagon, a lot of people were hurt. People right. lost their lives. A big chunk of that building was missing. And then, of course, the, the heroes that overtook a hijacked plane that would crash into a rural field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Kristen, when you look back on 9-11, I'm sure for you, you're one of the ones that, because you were old enough at that time, like you knew what was happening, right? right. You, that, that is something that is stamped in your brain, like you remember where you were. Where, right. where, where were you when, when all this happened? I was actually working, um, watching TV while I was making coffee for the lobby. I remember watching the plane hit the first tower, and I remember it being a beautiful day. The sky was bright blue, not a cloud in the sky, um, just, and that feeling like, we're not going to be all right, you know. That was a hard day. I can't. I cannot even fathom what the people in New York City felt that day. It, uh, you know, it, it's weird because everybody has a different story on where they were when everything happened or when they heard about it. I was actually I was living at, at Windsor Place, and in Davidson, and uh, I didn't have cable TV at the time, and I didn't have the rabbit ears, so I had no TV. I, like, I had a TV in my apartment, but it was to play video games and movies. Right. Um, one of my wrestlers called me and said, we are under attack, or are, are you watching TV? We are under attack. And he thought it was the, the, uh, the Air Force from uh, somewhere in the Orient that was coming to attack us because there was no information at that right. time. And I turned on the radio and I, I always listened to Banana 101, right? The yeah. rock station, but it, there was no rock music on there. Like they had uh, tapped into a ABC News. So that's when I knew something major was happening and I was listening to the report. The first plane had already hit and then I heard them describe the second plane coming in. Mm -hmm. And then as the hours go by, it, I mean, it wasn't until like six o'clock that evening that I got in front of a, of, of a TV and I actually saw the footage of the towers coming down. Then they were telling you what, what was happening at the Pentagon and then about this plane in Pennsylvania. And as things are unfolding, you're just sitting there thinking, this is one of those moments in our history. Pivotal. Pivotal, absolutely. Great, great way of, you know, to, to describe it. You had Pearl Harbor. You had when when President Kennedy was was assassinated. Mm -hmm. People remember when that happened. You know, right. I know my mom re remembered vividly where she was when that happened. Yeah. And now 9-11. Mm -hmm. 
to some degree, I guess, the space shuttle explosion in, in 86, to a lot of people, they remember that, but my, my goodness, this on, on this scale was something we've never seen before. And um, People running from their, for their lives in the street, that's just... From, a, from this wall of dust and debris and what we would find out to be part of the building, people's whatever, you yeah. know what I mean? Not to not trying to get too morbid about this, but it is what it is, and it's a huge part. Now it's a huge part of our our history, and you know I'm sure you've seen because you spend time on social media, and you've seen people, especially within the last few days, and I'm sure it'll be, you know, here tomorrow too on the on the actual anniversary of, but. Mm -hmm. All these people posting their things about the conspiracy theories. This was a government job. They rigged the, the towers up to come down this and you know, thing. Look, and I mentioned this on, on my podcast on Tuesday. Um, everybody can have their opinion. I, I am not. I am not here. We are not here to tell you what's right and what's wrong. That your opinion is right or wrong. That's not what we're here for. But regardless of what or why. A lot of people died that day. Right. For what? Why? Mm -hmm. They were the, these innocent victims of a cowardly attack, regardless of who orchestrated it. Right. Um, I, you know, I know what I saw. Mm -hmm. I saw a commercial airline slam into the side of the World Trade Center. Right. I saw those towers come down. Uh, we don't have, you know, de definitive actual fo footage of what happened in Washington, nor do we have it on the plane that went down in Shanksville. Regardless, innocent people lost their lives. Yeah. C civilians that went to work inside those towers, the Port Authority and the New York Police Department that went rushing in there, the Fire Department. And you know, as they're trying to get people out of those buildings, they're rushing in there, um, and not just those lives lost. The um, you know, the almost three thousand at this point, but how it affected their families. Yeah, you're talking. I mean, moms, dads, yeah, kids, yeah, aunts, uncles, friends, brothers, sisters. I mean, across the board, everybody that was that 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 perished on that day. Was some was something to somebody, right. right? And you can take all of your you know your thoughts and your opinions on what happened, um, and that's fine. I would just ask that at least you know here today, tomorrow, just the weekend, really. I mean, if if you're going if you're going to be one that shares and exposes and glorifies that narrative. That is certainly your prerogative. What I would say is, this weekend, let's have a little bit of dignity. Let's have a little bit of respect. Mm -hmm. Because like I said, regardless of what or why, this is what's happened. The New York skyline no longer looks the same. Two towering pillars, iconic pillars, are no longer there. It is now replaced by a tower of one. A freedom tower, mm -hmm. right? Regardless, I would ask that you just kind of be conscious and aware of what you're putting out there, and just have some sort of of, of respect for the ones that we lost and the families that were affected by it. Do you have anything you, you'd like to add to that? Yeah, I just I completely agree. Just consider the loss that other people are suffering. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, because unless you were there or you knew somebody, you really have no idea what they're going through, especially as we come up on a very, it's a milestone anniversary, yeah. it's an emotional an anniversary, and like I said, you know, n never before has a 20-year block of time run by like that, and right. you know, here, here we are, we're at the, we're on the eve of the 20 year anniversary. So, and, and unfortunately, Kristen, you know as well as anybody, it takes things like that on that level. I mean, not it doesn't have to be on that level, but it takes bad cir circumstances to put life back into perspective, yeah. right? So, what I would say is um, use this an this anniversary here tonight to um, 
get reacclimated, get refocused on what's truly special in life. It's not how much money you have in the bank. It's not all your fancy gizmos, gadgets, and gimmicks. It's about the connection that you have with the people who mean the most to you. So with that, we certainly appreciate you tuning in this week, and we will be back live on the air uh, here on ONTV on October the 22nd. That is a 6 p.m. start, and you, you can follow all of our information on Facebook. Just look for Close to the Heart. For Kristen Snyder, we certainly appreciate you tuning in. Be awesome to yourselves and to each other, and we'll see you next time right here on Close to the Heart Live on ONTV. TV.